would happen if you bought a $10,000 body kit from China and put it on a supercar? Well, that's what we're finding out today as we attempt to install this body kit with zero experience. Why do this, you may ask? Well, last year, I bought an abandoned Aston Martin that had been left at a body shop for 15 years, sitting torn apart and collecting dust with the goal of not only rebuilding it, but making it way cooler than a regular one. It was going pretty well as we got it looking like a real car again and driving properly. But in order to make it cooler, it needed something special. So when I saw this $10,000 body kit from a sketchy website, I knew what had to be done. But now we need to see if this was a total waste of money or if it turns a supercar into something truly special. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, we dismantled the entire car and got the first few panels installed. The left fender and the side skirt. After a bit of trial and error, we actually found a pretty decent way to get everything mounted and lined up properly. But then we ran into our first major problem of the install, which we have to deal with now. And it's got me a bit scared, honestly. With that fender on that side, we were able to get it in relatively easily. But on this side, we have an ECU in our way and a bracket for the ECU. Now I think, think that the ECU should be fine, but we need to shave this entire front of the bracket off in order to uh, potentially make it fit. So it's time to lobotomize the coupe. And uh, I'm gonna don my safety gear because my mom will get mad at me otherwise and uh, hopefully not completely destroy it. I'm scared. Before we do any cutting, we have to remove the ECU itself from the bracket. When you're messing with ECUs, it's always good to disconnect the battery first because if you mess with it plugged in, you can cause some serious electrical problems in your car. Because basically all the wires in the car are routed straight to the ECU, it would be ideal if we didn't have to move it at all. With that done, we can unplug the ECU itself and unbolt everything holding it in place. Then, with it out of the way, we can start to modify the bracket. With the bracket mostly removed, we can now try to reinstall the ECU, which luckily still bolts up. And now we can test if the fender fits properly, which I'm still not so sure about. All right. We're still hitting something. Yes, we are. The question is what? <laughs> the question is answered by ECU. <laughs> by, uh, by how much is the next question? Because we're going to need to cut probably a lot. Yeah. It's that edge. That's actually the ECU. And we would need quite a bit. Oh. We're going to the ECU down. But that's where the mounting bracket is. And the, all the cables run. No, just like put a spacer on it. Uh, that's not a horrible idea, actually. Space or what? Pushing it downward? Like, yeah, like, like a, we, we could use like something like socket size. We so have yeah. more room down? Yeah, we do. It would just sit like down here. In order to move the ECU down, we're gonna use some slightly oversized nuts and longer bolts on one side. And to stay true to the crankshaft roots, we're gonna zip tie the other side. Thankfully, we aren't having any wiring issues by just moving it down a few inches. And with the ECU moved down, we can see if the fender fits better. And I really hope it does. I think we're still hitting it. There we go. We're still hitting it. I'm in. We are hitting it, but oh is, it, is it? Yeah, it's holding this whole thing up. I think. Uh, uh, we're getting closer. Yeah, definitely. After trimming even more of the bracket, the fender still doesn't fit. And unfortunately for us, it's actually banging into the ECU. So we're gonna have to solve that. And the way we're gonna do it is uh, just a little scary. So we test fit it again. It's still hitting here. So now I have to do something that I don't want to do, and that's cut the edge of the ECU off. Now I don't trust myself, and I don't trust Will, but I trust Will more than myself. Just uh, really honestly insane. <laughs> Trimming the ECU is very scary for multiple reasons. The first is that cutting and sanding on the ECU can cause it to vibrate a lot, as well as get pretty hot, risking damaging the computer inside. The second is that we don't even know if it'll fit when we trim it down, so we could be doing all of this for no reason at all and then end up destroying the ECU for the fender to still not even go on. There we go. With the ECU trimmed down as much as we feel comfortable with, now we have to try fitting it again. And if this doesn't work, I'm honestly not sure what we're gonna do. 
Oh yeah. And look at this, this time we don't have anything bad happening. That's pretty good. With the fender fitting as best as we can get it, now we can install it the same way we did on the other side, without all the headache this time. We do this by lining the fender up where we want it to stay and drilling holes through the fender into the frame. With the holes made, we can insert threaded rivets with this machine, and now we're almost ready to bolt the fender to the car. But before we do, we have something else we need to take care of. A question we get asked a lot. Some of you have been asking, where do we find our cars? Like the Aston Martin that we're working on, or maybe this uh, beautiful M5, or maybe the Miata behind you, or even maybe this Raptor. We have a lot of cars now. And we found most of them on Auto Tempest, which you should be using to find your next car, because it is the best way to search for cars. With just one search, you can see all the results, meaning you don't need to waste all your time jumping from site to site. Honestly, you'd be silly not to use it, because it's seriously the best. I am always looking on there. If you see something and you think, that's something that the crankshaft guys would like. You should send it to me because we have a problem buying cars. And we're in debt. So remember, for all the cars with just one search, make sure you head over to autotempest.com. The link's in the description. Click it. Do you that. Regret it. You're the best. And, and now, go let's look. put that stupid body kit on. Yeah, that body kit. We should probably be doing that. We're kind of wasting time over here right now. But go to Autotempest so you don't waste your time. With body kits like this, things usually just don't fit right. And for us, that's definitely the case. Cheap fiberglass body kits, especially ones that aren't purchased frequently, are often made with fairly low quality molds. This body kit has probably only been made four to five times, so the quality is lackluster at best, making all the panels slightly different and causing issues. In our case, it's causing the door to catch on the fender, so we have to do even more trimming. Fortunately, we have the right tools, and with a bit of trial and error with our belt sander, I think I have enough clearance to open the door. So let's test it out. Well, one. There we go. Oh yeah. All right, let's bolt her up, baby. With the door fitting properly now, we can bolt the fender down fully to its final position, which although seems like a simple task, feels like a huge victory. Sometimes working on cars can be incredibly frustrating when you hit some kind of roadblock that stops you from completing what you set out to do. But once you finally get it right, there is literally no better feeling. We have both fenders on by some miracle. And now, we want to get the front bumper on and test fit the hood so we can see what the entire front end looks like before we get to all the scary stuff in the back that requires um, cutting parts of a very expensive car. Yeah, So, but look at this. This looks sick. God dang. It's actually, it fits shockingly well. When we mount it the right way, it's not bad. I mean, granted, there's, you know, there's a bit of... Yeah, but if you just push it Yeah, down, but yeah, 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 wind, yeah. You see, once the wind travels over this panel. Yeah, it's gonna create a lot of downforce. It'll create yeah, downforce yeah, and yeah. then it will sit perfectly flush with the head. Well, by perfectly flush, I mean about 75% flush with the headlight. To be honest though, since we put the car together the first time, it already kind of fit terribly. So as uh, Daily Driven Exotics would say, it's because race car is why it doesn't fit well, not because we don't know what we're doing. With some questionable fitment issues aside, we can finally do something I've wanted to do so badly. Look at the new hood. Feel of the hood. Oh man, please don't be violent. Jackson, be violent. Jackson's a violent guy. That's not true. Yes, he's, he's making me out to be a violent No, guy. not violent with people. Violent yeah. with stuff that you shouldn't be violent with. Henceforth, things break. There's wood in here. Yeah. The yeah. wood modification. Would oh, you believe it? Oh. No, it does not be true. Is that that looks living? so crazy. Wow. Oh my God. Right. With the hood living up to my insane race car expectations, now we can install it. Installing the hood should actually not be super difficult, but because we're installing an Alibaba body kit, there are still some issues. With aftermarket hoods, reusing the factory hood latches, releases, and rubber bump stops is pretty common. The difference with our kit is we actually have to drill out the holes that they sit in. And if we don't get it right, the hood won't fit properly, which would honestly not be super ideal. Rather than just use a massive drill bit and hope for the best, we're slowly taking away material with the belt sander until the brackets fit just right. It's kind of a slow process, but it's worth it for a better final result. And with all the holes ready and parts installed, we can finally fit the hood up to the struts and see what everything looks like. Okay, it's not perfect. That's a lot of gap. No, 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 but... If there's less on that, that's how That's a pretty interesting gap happening there. Dude, it's just a, it's a race car. This has some really bad panel gaps. come gap. up and... Yeah, but that's the point. That's not the point. You hate panel gap. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. We'll fix it somehow. The this front top of that one's fine, the bottom of this one's down. fine. 
So then we need to just push that over that way a little bit. So I think the hood is just off kilter. The hood does have a bit of adjustment built into it. And after a bit more trial and error, it seems to be lined up a little better. Unfortunately for us though, it's not enough adjustment to fit perfectly. So rather than dwell on that, we're gonna finish up installing the front end and look into a solution for the fitment after the full kit is installed. So now we just have to take care of the bumper. We have pretty much the full front end together here. We just are missing the front bumper and this giant lip in the front, uh, which we're gonna have to figure out a way to support. But in the meantime, uh, these two holes, this one and this one, those fit perfectly, which is uh, unique for this kit. We've had some trouble getting the bolt holes to line up. This one does. Uh, these holes also line up with the holes in the kit itself down here. They just uh, aren't threaded. So we've had to find bolts that will work and hopefully this will be pretty smooth. Another issue we found with this kit is that the holes are basically all different sizes. So Will is taking care of the boring task of drilling all the holes out to the right size. We also got the wrong size washers, so Will has to drill those out too. And with all that done, we can start to line the bumper up and bolt it down. The front end, look at that, it's a thing of beauty. It well needs some adjustment, but in the meantime, that'll work. We're gonna need to do the back now, which is terrifying um, and I'm scared. If you're wondering about this and why that looks not perfect, it's kind of angled up a little, we'll solve that. We have a solution to that problem, but let's get the whole kit on first and worry about that later because- uh, Now we have to take care of the rear end, which we already know won't be easy. With the front end done, we're moving to the back end and uh, we gotta take this entire rear bumper off first. And then I think, the plan is to uh, rear bumper first, only because that will tell us where the lines should probably it's, line up. Yeah. And then uh, side skirts uh, are off right now because yeah. that's the only way we can lift it. We'll because do rear bumper first, Jackson, and then we'll line up this how we want it. Yeah, and then we're good. The rear bumper is held on by the most fasteners I've ever seen. And they're in the strangest places. There are bolts under the tail lights, in the wheel wells, and most strangely on the exhaust tips themselves. And even though I'm the one who put it on, I still can't remember where they all are. After floundering for quite a while though, it's finally ready to come off, which means we can reveal the rear bumper, which is insane. All right, this is allegedly the only piece we haven't seen. This is allegedly the rear bumper, but it's gigantic. Oh my God. It might be the hardest one to fit. Get a feel for it. I think it's the exhaust on. I think you're right. Like we expected, the exhaust goes straight into the bumper, and we have to remove the tips to even see if it'll slightly fit. With the tips removed, we can get a better idea of what we have to do to make it work. Tips are off, now we're gonna test fit one more time. We probably have to remove the rest of the exhaust. And the exhaust is something we're gonna need to figure out because uh, this kit, oh. That looks cool, actually. I'm not gonna lie. The exhaust is still hitting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Oh, dude, it looks sick. The exhaust is still hitting, for sure. So here's the deal. Let's put this bumper down and I'll explain the exhaust situation. We're running into a slight issue, which we, we kind of figured would happen, but we don't really have a solution yet. We're hitting on the exhaust because this kit does not really want you to run the exhaust this way. You can see it's supposed to go there in that hole, which means we would have to cut a hole here. Yeah. Which uh, I'll tell you why that wouldn't happen is because that might look simple, but it's about two feet of frame. Uh, the race car, that's not a problem, which is what this kid is modeled after, but on the actual street car, it is a problem. So we're gonna have to figure out what we do with the exhaust and where we run it. There's a way, I'm sure, but uh, I don't know yeah. what it is yet. The rear bumper won't fit because of the exhaust, which is something that we're gonna have to figure out, but we don't have the time at this very moment, which means we'll also need to wait to uh, put the rear fenders on, which is the scariest part of the whole thing, because we're literally gonna need to cut into the car uh, and there's no reversing that once it's done. We also, um, I think to solve this exhaust problem, we're gonna need to cut into the rear bumper, which is also equally scary. So subscribe, uh, we're gonna get this thing done and it's gonna look sick.